कैसे हैं आप लोग वेलकम टू एपिसोड थ्री ऑफ चिल टाइम और आज हमारे साथ है मिस्टर अभिनव कुमार थैंक यू थैंक यू सो हाउ वुड यू इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ इफ आई मे से लाइक बिकॉज सो अभिनव हैज फिनिश्ड इज बैचलर्स फ्रॉम पेंटिंग एंड इज नाउ करेंटली डूइंग इज मास्टर्स इन फिलोसॉफी so that's such a cool i a cool shift from painting to philosophy mm-hmm. so how would you recognize yourself like as a artist as a philo- philosophy student or as a lotrate how would you uh, say like, uh yeah of course i would still like to do a lot of painting yes and uh, i think uh, studying philosophy would only add to it so that way i think that's it so cool be a help. so in a way i'm just creating a space for myself <laughs> so in a way it's like a research that you you are doing hmm. to just elevate your art hmm. in a way yeah, yeah, yeah. so my first question would be ke aapne ye shift kaise decide kiya like after completing painting like how would you took the decision that i want to pursue philosophy shift to practical tha kafi yeah practical tha practical tha in the sense uh मैंने क्या शिफ्ट का भी प्रैक्टिकल था क्योंकि मैंने मैं बिल्कुल मेरे को पेंटिंग करना था लेकिन ऑलरेडी आई वॉज ऑलरेडी वर्किंग ऑन सम टेक्स्ट एंड एवरी थिंग सो एंड नाउ दैट वॉट यू आर वर्किंग ऑन इज अ हैंकर चीफ और ये एक्चुअली उनका काम है लाइक दिस इज the medium of your pref- preference mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, most of work is very personal i believe the way you are write everything and the way you connect visuals with the words mm-hmm. so i so i do agree with your point that philosophy can really help uh, you not only add text to the matter mm-hmm. but also to clear ideas mm-hmm. or give you some more ideas regarding your work सो दैट सच अ कूल ट्रांजेक्शन आई फील लाइक बिकॉज काफ़ी बार ये होता है ना कि पेंटिंग करके कोई आर्ट्स में नहीं जाता काफ़ी बार आर्ट्स करके लोग पेंटिंग में आते हैं ट्रांजेक्शन टू फिलोसफी इज गुड है Oh, that's so cool man. and uh, we were talking yesterday hmm. just few days ago we were talking hmm. or uh, you mentioned albert camus hmm. who is a great philosopher hmm. and you are saying like you are very impressed by existentialism and uh, other philosophers like camus but uh, uh, why camus like how uh, why why do you think camus is the one which really like made you said it was for uh, it was even for some of my classmates as well that uh, who happened to be in philosophy when they said and say that uh, it's only after reading camus and yeah. those people <laughs> they are into philosophy simply because uh, in a way to read camus is fascinating like he writes he 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 also i mean He is not just a philosopher. I mean, that who literature also deals with at the same time. Yeah, but uh, yeah, like he is an author first. Yeah, mm-hmm. like Camus was an author uh-huh. first, and then he. So he is also loosely a writer. Yeah, and loosely a philosopher. A like just like someone once said that uh, a philosopher is a is a halfway poet, halfway uh-huh. scholar, halfway scientist. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> everything that's so halfway. Cool. <laughs> that's so cool, man, and. because of uh, abhi now i got to, got a chance to uh, understand camus mm-hmm. and la- just few days ago i even saw a, a school of life video it's a youtube channel yeah and uh, they, it was very quick video just introducing camus and his life and his mm-hmm. works and very b- basic philosophical ideas mm-hmm. that he would have and i like like how he he delves into cynical and nihilism mm-hmm. but in the end of the day he is very hopeful mm-hmm. regarding 
humanity and where it's going. Something which uh, the most famous nihilist or cynical people would not say. Mm -hmm. For example, like Nietzsche is a good example. Mm -hmm. But why, uh, why do you think like Camus would have this positive mindset? about something which is so like, you know, <laughs> like God is dead and that sort of thing. Yeah, he, he never talks about it directly. Like for Camus, is, it's very much like uh, uh, to, to speak very plainly, I yeah. would say that. Yeah, he talks almost like since life has no meaning, so there's no point in uh, finding it either. So he approaches yeah. it almost like that. Yeah. For other existentialists, it's m much more like uh, I don't know, I'm like just speaking. Like for others, it's more like, yeah, it's. Uh, they usually go into uh, realm of uh, what we often get to see with the con some of the confessional poets as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> like uh, yeah. uh, everything is. Uh, uh, like no, things are not going well and those things. And most of the yeah. people usually, I mean, initially we all do connect with. Uh, with existentialist philosophers or confessional poets in that way. But yeah, but then yeah, Camus is a bit different. A lot more refreshing. Yes, <laughs> he has a very refreshing yeah, take yeah, yeah. because yeah. the thing with Camus is, or what I have understand, again, we are, we are not experts, <laughs> we are just uh, sure, two sure. students who sure. are very interested in philosophy. Mm -hmm. So with Camus, what I uh, realize that, well, nobody cares. Mm. The world is f <laughs> mm -hmm. sorry beep. Mm. The fuck the world is uh, uh, is just a giant ball mm. in the middle of space. So why don't you live your life to the fullest and the happiest? Yeah. Like that. That's such a fresh take. Like most recent, more recently, I just read. Uh, I, I just talked about Camus for another reason that I was just reading. Uh, most is, I was just reading one of his books most recently, and that was Happy Death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Happy that, Death, and uh, it itself like, I mean, uh, name name suggests yeah. suggests it, it's all right. So uh, is uh, this one of the last works of Camus? No, no, no. It sounds like <laughs> it does sound like it must be the last yeah. one since it's, it talks about death. No, no, it's nothing like that. It, it's rather the first work of Camus, but oh. he did not get it published until I mean until. Uh, 40 years of his death, it was oh, actually published. Okay. It was the first book and after reading it, I mean, I had read Stranger be yeah, even Stranger, before yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Since it's very popular. Yes. So, uh, I read it before, before reading this. But when I, I read this, uh, Happy Death, it gave me an impression that it might be... Uh, this book was probably written before Stranger. Oh, and I just found it sense. out. Makes and, sense. Uh, uh, and I searched it on Wikipedia and I found out that it was published in 75 or something. But it was written before that. Yes. So, I mean, there was something in it that was like, uh, one could make out that it must have that, been written. That Camus before. is more of a positive guy rather than... Yeah, yeah, somebody. those things, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's very interesting, like, th that's the thing about philosophy, that when you really delve into the whole idea mm -hmm. of philosophy, like... I remember in our college, we had philosophy, mm. Indian philosophy and Western. Mm. Uh, you would have in your bachelor's as well. Mm. That uh, one of our teachers were asking, like, what is philosophy? Explaining like one sentence or mm. something. And I, I said something like, mm. understanding of the world mm. is philosophy. Mm. And that was the correct answer. Mm. And at the time, uh, the teacher was very happy. like. Dekha, dekha, yes, arta, yes, arta. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, he was very happy about the whole thing mm -hmm. but uh, uh, but I do feel like when you study modern philosophy I think you can shed some more light on this mm -hmm. like in modern philosophy the whole point of like understanding of the world is like very classical philosophy I feel like like Greek Greek philosophy is mm -hmm. fits perfectly in this uh, in this definition mm -hmm. of understanding of the world because that's what Aristotle and Plato did mm -hmm. Like and Aristotle was very practical. And the reason that we also see Greek philosophy in terms of what has already been documented. Yeah. And there, there's hardly anyone surviving from that yeah. time period. So, while, while modern philosophy is more to do with uh, the philosophy that developed around First World War. Okay? Exactly. So, Before, like, so the understanding of world, the whole point of like understanding the world, 
doesn't apply to modern philosophy <laughs> because <laughs> because now you're not understanding the world in modern philosophy in modern philosophy i feel like you're understanding the human the human more rather than the world around you like the basic idea is there mm. i don't know i know i'm sounding really stupid mm. for a lot of people but yeah like the basic idea is there that understanding of the world mm. but the pra- the the methodology i would say is change from uh, natural world yeah. to human mm-hmm. so that uh, so that's something is very interesting like right in the beginning we had uh, uh, we had just this uh, natural philosophy yeah. and everything came into that you know, natural yeah. sciences and everything so natural philosophy basically dealt with everything that that uh, is that that, is, that is, belongs to the world right yeah. the study of the study of uh, the study of uh, environment in a way yeah 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 like what's happening kind around of. you that's true so now coming back to you mm-hmm. so where do you stand in terms of uh, philosophy or philosophical idea like what i mean by that is like some people will say oh i'm a stoic mm-hmm. some people will say oh i i'm an optimist so we like we all like we all can relate to some of the other school of philosophy philosophy yeah, yeah, yeah. since it is, it is to do with like right? yeah so yeah that way we can do like so what school would so you say you belong to for me i don't know like uh, anyhow i would like to remain flexible in this case like you know, i like i just talked about can you simply because yeah. i just read him recently yeah. otherwise there i've also heard uh, heard people like there are also some of my friends who talk about derrida and foucault and those kind of things yeah. but personally this structuralism and uh, construction of uh, interpretation of language and all that are not my interests so yeah. i yeah. hardly delve into it i yeah. mean although i have some idea of it so and also and also uh, i tend to approach philosophy more in terms of what i am doing i mean the kind, the work yeah, like that i am indulging in yeah. yeah so it's not primarily philosophy yeah like your work your work, uh, work are very like literature based a lot of writing a lot of uh, expression comes through writing mm. so right. so i think your taste in philosophy also influence yeah, yeah. if if that. i had a chance of taking literature then probably i would have just opted for uh literature probably yeah. but since you cannot do masters we don't have the option of doing masters straight away in literature so. oh. Oh, but anyhow i mean yeah. that's not the case i mean that is how you eventually discover things yes yes, yes. <laughs> definitely like you do one thing and something picks your yeah, interest like, and then you follow that yeah yeah so uh, the second question uh, would be about regarding your work mm-hmm. like i i saw some pictures of your work which are uh, you are comfortable with mm-hmm. and uh, if you are seeing all the works uh, uh, in terms of in front of your screen mm-hmm. you will see a lot of their works are on either fabric mm-hmm. or in written form or in literature form mm-hmm. or uh, and uh, if you go in on the work if you zoom in and try to read what is written you can't read it so it's like an unreadable text almost those who can read it will read it but okay. uh, but a lot of people may have trouble mm-hmm. so it, it so was it something intentional like initially it was pointed out to me by my sister like oh. she once she just found out my diary i would even sometimes ask her to read my diaries like yeah. if, if, simply because i tend uh, i and mm. I, i was just trying to discuss ideas there was nothing yeah. like even even if i had to talk about something that was to be uh, that is usually meant to be hidden i would discuss it so technically that there was hardly anything left yeah. to do I mean, there was no mystery in it it was yeah. so rational yeah. so sometimes i would just i would even ask my sister to read it so that it, she might be her i mean get she might be benefited from it but <laughs> but she could hardly read read the uh, i mean uh, the, uh, the lettering the yeah. handwriting yeah handwriting yeah so even she she would initially say the same like you write it this way since you don't want others to read it but then but, yeah, but or was it something intentional or uh, no no it, it was never intentional it was yeah. never intentional i was not even sure that I, whether i'm i'm not even sure like the, initially i now. was not even sure that uh, if i am what i'm writing i am going to keep it all uh, uh, whether i'm going sense. to keep it or not 
Makes sense. So initially it was just for uh, notes that I was making, but later mm. on, I mean, it became a practice. So I became a little more conscious about what I was uh, doing. Uh, but uh, how did you transform from uh, a, a diary note to turn it into your practice or turn it into your voice or identity? Uh, I think those are just observational notes. Yeah. So there's hardly anything of uh, anything that is to do with literature. I've never tried poetry. Yeah. Or uh, most of the time, like uh, my inspiration usually came from uh, quotations that I began to read too much after oh, coming okay. out of school. So I mean, it's uh, it's Makes nothing sense. of a serious thing yeah, 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 uh, yeah. to do uh, when you talk about literature. So and I think it's such a but then yeah, way, in yeah. That, it it is. Uh, 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 it is for that reason I just got, got, I mean, I was introduced to many other things in literature, like many other writers, like their many writers. Many other writers, and other and yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and as a visual artist, or from, from a very visual artist point of view, mm. uh, the way writing has been used in paintings or in some certain clothes, like mm. the most famous one would be the screen. Mm -hmm. Edwin Munch screen mm -hmm. in which uh, there is a poem at the back of the painting. Mm -hmm. There are multiple versions of the mm -hmm. screen and mm -hmm. one of the version is like there is a full poem mm -hmm. written behind the painting. Mm -hmm. So the way literature is being used in a visual language mm -hmm. and I think you are a good example to how to explore it mm -hmm. or one way of exploring it. Mm -hmm. That's really cool to see. Uh, uh, so, the writings you said are not uh, are not hidden on purpose. It's just that people people yeah, might yeah, not yeah, understand yeah, the handwriting. Yeah. But uh, does it bother you? Like, uh, oh, I want to say this statement for a lot of people. Yeah, I can um, manage. Like some of the people even ask me that how do you manage to write? Uh, like, if if you write like this, then how how do you? I mean, manage to uh, reach man your audience. Yeah. No, no. In the, how do you manage it during examinations? Yeah. Like. So yeah, initially, uh, but I'm like uh, I write quite clearly when it comes to examination. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Some of the teachers do have problem. Like they talk to like yeah, yeah, they have yeah. personally said to me that you could just write a bit since they don't know how to. More, I mean, you can't change the yeah. handwriting, right? So some yeah. of them simply say that use the right pen or they say that you could just write a bit bigger yeah, just or things bigger, like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. That is all they can do. So yeah, th those things happen. Yeah. And another question which other people might ask if they are watching the whole video. Mm -hmm. So you are writing on a handkerchief mm -hmm. yeah. and I have seen your display and some of your works and they are on fabric. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, can you please explain more about the choice of using fabric rather than paper or like pa paper from your notebooks mm -hmm. which can add a connection to the diary and all that story yeah, yeah, yeah. but instead you are using fabric. Mm -hmm. So what's the story for that? Early, earlier also I was using uh, a very pocket diary kind of thing, yeah. like pocket sketchbook. And I just wanted it to present it as my work and yeah. instead of just keeping it as a preparatory, preparatory note kind exactly. of thing. So uh, since I like we we already have uh, enough examples. Like uh, yeah, I just don't want to take names. They are just too great to be yeah. dis discussed and yeah, yeah, just yeah. for the sake of discussing. But how? Yeah, I mean. So I just thought of like uh, using for the sake of portability in the first place and yeah, uh, yeah practicality plays a yeah like you great role in my work like yeah yeah <laughs> even the thing that I am doing it's quite immediate thing like I'm just making yeah. my hand <laughs> so yeah yeah like uh, I have it somewhere in my mind that the way of making your art real is by actually making it real like <laughs> oh that's such a that's such a cool statement uh, like i don't uh, like i don't want to sound utilitarian but still I mean, just utilitarian but yeah i, I, I mean I, really, I, I mean i see it that way like yeah. there is a scope for art to also i mean uh, be of as uh, i mean yeah be of use yeah that's true like art uh, for the longest time throughout the human history has always been used as something as an entertainment rather than utility and uh, it, I mean you can say the same for till now as well but like uh, let's say Bauhaus was one of those design schools which was really keen on uh, 
utilitarianism mm-hmm. and how uh, mm-hmm. good design beautiful design yeah. can be practical yeah but uh, again it goes into the category of design mm-hmm. designing yeah, yeah designing has always been yeah. utilitarian so of course but uh, when we talk about let's say fine art or visual mm-hmm. art which is very like like it reminds me of one of the quotations by Oscar Wilde he yeah, once said that all, all art is useless but <laughs> in a, <laughs> in a so, way yeah, yeah so in, in the very first in the very first like uh, when i say it in the very first impression you think that it you take you tend to take it literally that all yeah. art is useless but he does not actually perhaps he does yes. not actually mean to say that he just yeah. wants to say that all art is not just utilitarian like it does yeah. not have to be utilitarian, utilitarian yeah and so, that, that's the thing about quotation and philosophy as well that like people would take it so literally literally yeah that they don't even realize that oscar wilde himself was an artist yeah, yeah. He, he was like, a theater he went, person he went on to like at one point he even went on to say that um uh, reading books is just a occupation of a loner a man should rather be a good conversationalist yeah <laughs> now just think a writer yeah, saying that right or saying that yeah exactly reading books of oh, come on and and that's the thing about oscar wilde as well to like he is very cynical as well like yeah, he's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. like he's he's questioning the existence of art mm. so in a way he is an exist- existentialist yeah. and uh, but by saying it in such a bold Dad, bold statements, yeah, bold yeah, manner, yeah, yeah. like very like yeah, plain he, manner. He was like that. He was like yeah. that. Like it, one of the. But uh, but by saying those things, mm-hmm. you are making people aware of this kind of situations, and you are making some people either take a stand, like are a asa kaise bol diya, art is yeah, useful, yeah. Yeah. and some people may say, and some people may find enlightenment, like yeah, art is useless, mm-hmm. and that's okay. and because it's useless i have like, complete freedom like, of expression like it's again him who says that like people people understand the price of everything but value of nothing ah, value and price becomes statement. like value and price becomes two different things right like, exactly it can you, you can call it useless but it it does not become worthless it, like, uh, yes so yes that's that's the that's, that's the difference that we have to understand yeah. when you talk talk about things like this yeah, yeah, yeah value and price worth and use yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are very close knitted terms of which people tend to mistake over true 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 and that happens with every philosophical mm-hmm. ideas and and the thing is about uh, cynicalism or nihilism again going back to camus yeah, yeah. like even if he's saying that the uh, nothing matters he's not saying from the perspective of well nothing happens uh, nothing matters let's end everything yeah, yeah. which nietzsche and other ex- mm-hmm. existentialist w- would say mm-hmm. instead camus would say well nothing matters so why do you care <laughs> you know like why are you caring so much because nothing matters yeah, yeah. so live your life to the fullest mm-hmm. and that's such a good way there of there are so many like there are so many philosophers like uh, uh there's so many what do, what do i say like so many of his ideas are says that uh, they are very much practical and, and at the same time they are philosophical so which are very much ready to use in a way like yeah and that's what made camu actually famous yeah yeah, they, yeah yeah that is what i was saying yeah, like he's many of my common men they say that like we yeah. we just came into philosophy just to read camu sartre and yeah simon de beauvoir like like, like camu is presenting his ideas very complex ideas by mm. the way in a very uh, uh, easy manner yeah. that even uh, even someone who buy, uh, who sells bread and meat would uh, uh, would understand it mm-hmm. we like the idea kon hai like the idea no no we pause kar dete koi baat nahi main ha ha we pause kar dete and we are back to chhota sa disturbance aa gaya tha and now we are back So what were we talking about? I think we were talking about Camus and how uh, approachable he is. Art is useful. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, I mean, we are just fanboying on Camus mm-hmm. and Camus. Yeah. So, uh, so continuing the question. Mm-hmm. like why i mean this is very like off topic sort of mm-hmm. but i feel uh, 
at the same time it's kind of important to us as well uh, why do you think there is this uh, like in philosophy mm-hmm. why do you think some people some philosophers get like really famous and very quotable and people say oh he's so relatable and uh, some philosophers go into this absurdity mm-hmm. that the people don't connect with their ideas or they think their ideas are very complex so why do you think there is this uh, high class language uh, issue yeah like yeah i'll particularly like to talk about the language yeah issue language issue yeah. talking about like what makes it makes them famous and i mean that's how to get a topic by itself yeah that's true that's true yes. so yeah like uh, i read again i would, i would quote Are someone yes yes <laughs> no quote to uh, to justify quotations yeah. sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so uh, there was a quotation by bertrand russell in which he said that uh, a person a gullible person yeah. i'm just Um, yeah of course although quotes are meant to be cited in the very yeah like that's the, the very act, i mean the way it's been quoted in the very yeah. words that it, uh, it yeah, was like actually the, the quote are what makes uh, makes it easier yeah, to understand yeah. so yeah okay so so i would just simply say like he had said something like uh, like people tend to i mean most gullible people what they do that when they when they read things yeah. they actually first uh first just understand what they are capable of understanding yeah they begin by doing that and yeah and, that, and then they make goal, their own yeah, yeah then they make their own interpretation and further they just start manipulating so oh that's a, that's a very good way to put it yeah that's a problem of being too feasible yeah i mean when it comes to that's a good argument that's a good argument because a lot of time people may argue to like oh like uh, why there is a need of high language or why yeah, there is a need yeah, of yeah, very yeah. academic language mm-hmm. but at the same time i feel like if you don't have that language mm-hmm. people can easily misinterpret the whole uh, yeah yeah, yeah like yeah it's necessary for that for that reason like even george orwell who who is someone who who i mean thinks in uh, yeah like, george and why why am i taking names first of all no you can take like, names like what is I could just torment the name if I had a choice, but then yeah, that. that no, but I think see. names are important yeah, because yeah. not only uh, other philosophers are watching this. There are <laughs> there are a lot of students as well yeah, who are so interested. Like somewhere I just read that even George Orwell, who talks, I mean, who has written so many essays and yeah. to the point uh, articles, yeah. which is very very. Uh, where his uh, he basically aims to reach out to the people. Yeah. I mean, to the common people and. Uh, so even he say many a times even he says that uh, i just read him somewhere that yeah he said that the l- language is very i mean one has to be very particular about the language yeah. you can't just come down to the level of uh, like you just can't uh, make it easy just to get feasible i mean that that yeah, should that not should, be the only reason of yeah that should that shouldn't be the goal yeah yeah that shouldn't be the goal uh of philosophy or that should be the goal of any theory ha uh-huh. like it's it becomes more like you are selling a product you are yeah. simply selling your ideas, ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah it becomes a kind of propaganda that way and like uh, otherwise there have been i mean good uses of uh, a simple day to day language like yeah, yeah 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 there have been good uses of ideas being conveyed in very simple and uh, you can say feasible language Yeah, but then yeah, those are on very different grounds altogether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and other thing is, okay, that there, there is this also another argument. Like I don't want to be controversial. I don't want to sound controversial, but there was this argument. Uh, I believe few months or uh, it's happening for few years, but like few months ago, it really ignited again. Mm-hmm. Like the government language. Government. Uh, yeah. the. the language or the academic language mm-hmm. used by the government in their policies mm-hmm. and how normal people don't understand those languages mm-hmm. so how how are they going to tell the government whether they agree with it or not and which is a fair argument mm-hmm. but the only problem with that argument is i think it was uh, oh i i shouldn't take names mm-hmm. uh, uh the 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 point is like government has to write in a very highly academic language mm. because they can all 
always be misinterpreted. Yeah, yeah. There's By a writing in a very simple language, mm-hmm. anybody can find some kind of plot hole mm-hmm. within it. Mm-hmm. And same thing goes with philosophy as well. Mm-hmm. Like with philosophy, you have this uh, responsibility mm-hmm. of not only giving your concept and theories, but also be respectful and be very thorough. Yeah. And I think a uh, high academic language is necessary to explain very thorough ideas. The only what? problem I feel, mm-hmm. that, sorry, I'm, I'm interrupting, yeah. but the only problem I feel with the high language is like, it's not necessary for everything. Mm-hmm. And that's where a lot of philosophy gets uh, confused. Mm-hmm. That uh, sometimes it's so highly put mm-hmm. that ideas which are very simple mm-hmm. need they need to become dumbed down mm-hmm. to just explain the very basics of philosophy or of, of ideas mm-hmm. and and I actually like to know your thoughts on this that uh, do you think art history yeah. not art philosophy not mm-hmm. aesthetics but art history mm-hmm. do you think uh, art history needs to be very highly high language or do you think something simple can be done or there is a middle ground? Uh, I, know it's, I know it's kind of a very yeah. bouncing kind of question. <laughs> Art history, yeah, I think I, I, as far as, uh, it's again like, it's just, uh, it's again another discipline which needs accuracy and uh, appropriation uh, like it has to be very appropriate not appropriation to say but yeah it has to be very precise in its application yes. since yeah, it's, right. it's history so one has to be very particular about terms and the language so I think in that way it does yeah. it does but then yeah communication does not always uh, restrict I mean uh, it's not just about as far as just communication is concerned yeah. like communicating ideas it's not just about those uh, it does not restrict itself to uh, those I mean what do you say like uh, those barriers of yeah uh, like yeah those confined means are yeah. limited and, and it's such a good uh, counter argument which I heard in such a long time because I have this discussion with a lot of people mm-hmm. like and there's this whole movement now Mm. of like simplifying everything especially history Mm. you know students don't get very interested Mm. in art history Mm. or aesthetical studies so there's this counter argument for uh, making the language easier but now listening to your uh, Mm. argument Mm -hmm. i totally get why academy is the way it has to be yeah like like it, it, it would again become just another thing like we we are now we are we are consuming like it, of course it's just my idea like yeah, yeah sure 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 there's nothing like uh, I'm not being I, I I hope I'm not being assertive while I'm talking no no no, 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 no. Yeah, so no, no, no. so like there are so many things we consume now yeah. so it just it, it otherwise it would just become just another kind of consumption yeah like uh, that's a good that's a good like idea. we are consuming so much of music simply because many a times we even if we don't like it. Simply because it's so much accessible, so much cheap that we want to fill ourselves with it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, so, a, that's a good way to put it, that uh, by so we, making then, content. Then, there are a few lines, no, like by Alexander, there's a po- poem by Alexander Pope in which he says that little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Ah, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Their shallow droughts intoxicate your brain and wow. having too much of it sobers us again. Yeah. So I mean, it's the same thing, like, no, but that's a good argument, like something which is very sensitive, like history, hmm. which needs to be understood, which needs to be contextualized and cited. Yeah. By putting it very simply, hmm. you are creating this danger of getting it misinterpreted. Yeah. And the uh, thing is, like, I know a lot of people who are listening to this might get confused because I have a so name art history or simplified. As as far as as far as uh, I believe as far as introduction is con- uh, considered I mean as far as the introduction is concerned I yeah. think this simplification of language works there like we have catalogs and everything yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. we there's a altogether a different I mean what do you say 
like you can, there are synopsis of a book there's an introduction yeah. to a book and those things are there yeah. and uh, why do we have to uh, uh, why do we have to accept the content of the book also to be simple yes now you can come up with the introduction of the book to be very simple so as to i mean give you the initial view or initial overview viewers. of yeah. what actually is there in the book and i was going to come on that as well like even if i have a so called artist you were simplified mm-hmm. like the, my whole goal with the show mm-hmm. was to only say facts and stories mm-hmm. like i again like not to disrespect history or mm-hmm. not to simplify history in a way like it's very dumb and comedy mm-hmm. even though i make a lot of jokes out of it mm-hmm. but my whole point would be to just uh, uh make it as simple enough and very clear very clear cut line to line yeah, yeah. for example if i'm talking about prehistory mm-hmm. i will take the correct names i will say the correct time period yeah, yeah. even though the so story that, even though the stories are very imaginative yeah. and yeah. very fictional mm-hmm. I'm still saying giving you the correct information mm-hmm. and it's a very beginner thing. Yeah, so yeah. that is what I I mean by introduction when I say Yeah, yeah, totally. You are just introducing things. I mean, yeah. so in that way it certainly works. Yeah, like I'm I'm just doing some kind of beginner's idea mm-hmm. like like for example Albert Camus, right? Yeah. Like many people may not know him, so here I'm just writing his name. Mm-hmm. But by talking about him If you are interested, you will find a way around to yeah, Google yeah, his yeah. name, or yeah, you will find yeah, a way out to research people it. People should, yeah, they yeah. do it. So there is a space for uh, uh, academic language, but there is also space for a uh, very simple drawing room conversation. Drawing room conversation. The one that we are doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what we are doing. Drawing room conversations. But yeah, like it's it's an interesting idea, I, I, or an interesting argument rather that. that is they both can coexist yeah because uh, at the same time when i was discussing this ideas mm-hmm. with a lot of my friends they would mm-hmm. either take either pick one or the other mm-hmm. like some may say ki oh this is bullshit why why are we studying in such a detailed way even though we are only going to remember five lines about it mm-hmm. and at the same time it's like well it is necessary mm-hmm. otherwise people can have false ideas about them. Yeah, yeah yeah. So there is a space for both. Mm-hmm. Like that's why we have beginner, amateur, novice, professional, yeah, yeah. advanced. Like we have this levels mm-hmm. because of that. Like why do we have to convert people into just reading uh art history? If they're interested they would surely come like Yeah, that's in- true. Introduction is enough. Introduction is yeah, enough. Yeah. Like, like if it picks yeah. your interest you are going to search for it. Mm-hmm. Like I remember uh we were learning Indian aesthetics. Mm-hmm. and uh, it was our masters first year and uh, if you are one of the students who are learning indian aesthetics right now mai ek mantra bolta hu mantra phook lo yaad kar lo kyunki pura tumhara indian aesthetics wahi usi ke andar phasa hua hai roop bhed pramanani bhav lavaniya yojanam sadrishyam varnika bhangam iti chitram sadangakam एंड ये वो मंत्र है जो हर किसी को फूका जाता है हर किसी को बोला जाता है इंडियन एस्थेटिक्स इंडियन एस्थेटिक्स में बिकॉज ये मंत्र के अंदर ही पूरा एस्थेटिक्स है रूप भेद प्रमाण आने लाइक आई डोंट आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू गो इन टू दैट बट इज जस्ट अ लिटल टिप इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लर्न इंडियन एस्थेटिक्स और यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू लर्न इंडियन एस्थेटिक्स बट वॉन्ट टू लुक कोल इन फ्रंट ऑफ योर फ्रेंड्स ये मंत्र याद कर लो कूल लगोगे तो तो व्हेन वी वर डूइंग दिस व्हेन वी वर लर्निंग दिस होल मंत्रा एंड थिंग अ लॉट ऑफ माय फ्रेंड्स वर लाइक व्हाई आर वी लर्निंग इंडियन एस्थेटिक्स देयर इज वेरी लेस रिसोर्स ऑन इट इट्स हाफ ऑफ इट इट्स इन संस्कृत एंड मेनी पीपल मे नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दैट एंड जिसको इंटरेस्ट होगा वो तो अपने आप ही ढूंढ लेगा लाइक व्हाई देयर इज नीड फॉर इट यू नो लाइक एक क्वेश्चन वो भी आता है सो ये it's the same argument that uh, that comes also that we are uh, first of all uh, in schools we are taught all languages all together like science yeah. maths and then all of us are, and then when we come to class 10th we are uh, uh, asked to choose the subject yeah like that so some may say that if we had to study science then we could have just studied science all through but then that is not the case no like yeah, that, you that, have to be I mean, 
introduced to those subjects exactly first, right? like that's not only, a perfect solution. only after that you decide what what is to be taken yeah like yeah. Uh, that, that that is the whole thing like like uh, as you said like those subjects exist pythagoras theory is in seventh standard yeah, so yeah. that if somebody wants to be the next ramanujan mm-hmm. he has the idea ke, okay isko pythagoras bolte yeah, yeah. and he can do he can take his own path yeah, yeah. so that wo to hai like everything needs to be introduced to kids so that you would know then later they can choose yeah them. like by saying ke agar isko science le aaye to usko pehle se science hi dila do mm-hmm. it's not the correct solution yeah, like yeah. sunne mein acha lagta hai but it's not something practical yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, even in three idiots uh, there is this dialogue mm-hmm. by the way great movie nahi dekha hai to kya kar rahe ho mm-hmm. bahut time ho gaya bahut saal ho gaye us movie ko kya kar rahe ho tum dekho us movie mm-hmm. ko but there is a dialogue in the movie which i don't agree with mm-hmm. and also like in life you don't have to agree with everything by the yeah, way yeah, yeah. And so you find it for yourself yeah ultimately one finds it for us. yeah like you don't agree to something now maybe later you will do it mm-hmm. just take your time everybody mm-hmm. takes time so in trivious there is this dialogue by amir khan where uh, he says uh, about karina kapoor's uh, character's uh, mangeda mm-hmm. wo mere dil lag ki sherwani wo wala banda and uh, the story of, and his character is ke uh, उसने इंजीनियरिंग किया फ्रॉम आई सी ई जो कॉलेज है उससे इंजीनियरिंग किया यू एस गया फिर वहाँ से बैंकिंग किया और अब वो बैंक मैनेजर है सो रैंचो का डायलॉग ये है कि अगर उसको बैंकिंग ही करना था तो इंजीनियरिंग क्यों की एंड दैट इज समथिंग आई डोंट एग्री विद एक्चुअली आई आई नो इट्स इट्स अ वेरी फन डायलॉग थोड़ा फनी डायलॉग है फटाफट फटाफट बोल के निकल जाता है but uh, i don't agree with and a lot of people don't and that's okay yeah. but the whole uh, uh, the whole point of that conversation is mm. ki agar isko yahi karna tha mm. to isne teen saal engineering kyu ki mm. and we find us people yeah. uh, would have a better idea especially you and yeah. me who have changed fields of course like agar main applied se print making gaya a mm. painting se philosophy mein gaya yeah. So you would you would have much better idea that mm. like why is it necessary engineering to do so that you can do banking because yeah. you don't know at the time mm. and life is very long that yeah, yeah. like life is very long that you can't think about it that what you will do with life so yeah okay so yeah to keep the conversation moving तो अपना अभी अभी तक अपन ने बात कर लिया कि आप भी आप रुमाल पे क्यों करते हो एंड वाई राइटिंग इन राइटिंग सो उसी के रिलेटेड एक क्वेश्चन है डू यू थिंक देर इज दिस अगेन इट्स इट्स अ वेरी ऑफ टॉपिक क्वेश्चन अगर इफ यू आर नॉट कंफर्टेबल आंसरिंग इट्स ओके बट वाई डू यू थिंक देर इज अ शिफ्ट इन फाइन आर्ट्स वेर एवरीबडी इज ऑलमोस्ट मेकिंग Uh, a same looking art mm-hmm. like uh, एक डायरी का पन्ना होगा या फिर उनके स्केच बुक का पन्ना है mm-hmm. जिसमें कुछ लिखा हुआ है mm-hmm. और फिर उसके रिलेटेड कुछ मिनियचर वाटर कलर लाइक दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ बिकेम अ ट्रेंड फ्यू इयर्स अगो थिंग Uh, many even many of the poets and many of the writers use yeah exactly like sketching yeah like i'm not saying like you are you are better or worse ah. i'm just putting the argument mm-hmm. like it's a trend yeah uh, that a lot of people are putting a lot of personal works the first thing that it gives you kind of intimacy like that exactly. itself that itself becomes uh, uh, what is it i mean forms a content for your work like intimacy gives you uh, Yeah, the, the yeah, first yeah, yeah, thing yeah. that it it makes your work intimate. Like, yeah. You're just uh, <laughs> yeah, like uh, like your work becomes intimate, yeah. and the audience can see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, because you talk about it, it, yeah. it, it gives an impression of the work being very honest, which As, actually yes. connects with the audience. They they can put in faith. Yeah. The, they can in put the person, in faith yeah. in the person seeing that. Oh, it's. a page torn from your personal diary yeah. so at least they would I mean, so that 
like that, that, that is a very that very powerful about mm. that whole exercise mm. of course not everybody can do it mm. but jo log karte hain wo kuch soch ke karte hain mm. and that's something which needs to be appreciated and respected yeah that's a personal thing i mean yeah. and par, the, par, sometimes sometimes yeah. even that can be even uh, uh, when things become strategic like even that yeah. that starts working as a strategy I mean. yeah, it becomes a trend and yeah, then then the the impact gets loose yeah like jo impact apne pehle bande ka dekha hoga wo 20 ve 25 ve bande pe nahi aayega to the means ke wo sketchbooks yeah and and again we are not saying ke ye acha hai ke bura hai we are just saying like this is how art trend works like even but like like even in you even if you see like for confessional poets like yeah I follow many of them, like Sylvia Plath and those people. Yeah. Sylvia Plath and uh, even Virginia Woolf would be writing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those good kind of work. and some other confessional poets, N. S. X. Ten of those. People. So, so uh, even they would write. Uh, although they are talking about their own problems, they yeah. would, they make it a point to also I mean expand it to little. I mean, there's not just complain. It's not a just. It's not yes. just a, a letter of. a complaint or a grievance yeah. right there is also some literature to it yeah. i mean that, that is what makes it a bit open ended like yeah like uh, otherwise why would you read somebody else's poem that uh, time? exactly and i think is like there is a way of expression kuch log like how your way of expression is writing and this kind of uh, mm. uh, very sensitive writing mm. very sensitive drawing on a very sensitive medium mm. which is cloth mm. so that's your way of expressing something which is very intimate to you mm-hmm. uh if we talk about virginia wolf mm-hmm. and uh, uh those and and uh, uh, i forgot the author lady author jinone frankenstein likha tha oh mary shelley yeah. yeah mary shelley like true frankenstein she was talking about her own problems yeah, yeah. but she wrote about a monster it's a mm-hmm. horror story yeah, but that's her way of interpreting her problems and that's where that's the beauty of art mm-hmm. और आर्ट वही से तो निकलता है एंड hmm. एंड अगर आप जैसा आप जैसा आपने बोला कि लाइक डायरी का पन्ना है जिसको ah. आप लगा रहे हो इट्स अ वेरी इंटीमेट इंटीमेट और वो एक ऑनेस्टी वाला एलिमेंट आ जाता है ऑटोमेटिकली एंड एंड थिंग इज लाइक वो ऑनेस्टी ना दो पहलू वाला होता है आपका काम तो ऑनेस्ट है ही hmm. पर जो बंदा है ना वो भी ऑनेस्ट होता है एंड नाउ इन दिस 21st सेंचुरी आर्ट एरा the art is not only about the art piece but it is also about the artist themselves mm-hmm. ke like kafi bar aap ek diary ka panna dekhte ho you are very moved by that mm-hmm. then you meet the artist mm-hmm. aur aap usse poochte ho ki okay, i was very moved by it mm-hmm. kya inspiration thi you try to make a small talk to understand more mm-hmm. and the art and the way sometimes artist would react mm-hmm. in a certain way that can take the audience off ke like ye to bhaiya genuine nahi tha ye apne trend chalaya hai Mm-hmm. and and that's the whole point about honesty mm-hmm. like agar honestly aapne wo diary ka panna mm-hmm. phaad ke lagaya hai mm-hmm. with true conviction to wo aapki personality mein bhi dikhega mm-hmm. jab koi audience aapka viewer aapse baat karega mm-hmm. to usko pata chalega ki ha wo dil se aapne phaada hai wo panna mm-hmm. par agar aapne trend ke liye kuch banaya hai mm-hmm. aur ye sirf diary wala baat nahi hai mm-hmm. even in design trends even in yeah, even yeah. in visual trends yeah. कि अगर आप आप सिर्फ ट्रेंड को फॉलो कर रहे हो तो जिस दिन लोग आपसे मिलेंगे आपसे बात करेंगे तो उनको पता चल जाएगा, जाएगा। कि आप कितने ऑनेस्ट हो एक चीज ये भी होता है दैट इज समथिंग आई नो मैं मैं थोड़ा बीची साउंड करूंगा अभी मैं थोड़ा कंप्लेन कर रहा हूं पर इट्स कम फ्रॉम अ वेरी इंटीमेट स्पेस फॉर मी बिकॉज़ आई आई रियली मीन इट जिस तरह से लोग अपना काम का डिस्क्रिप्शन बदल डालते हैं अपने पोर्टफोलियो में से like i don't agree with that i don't like that mm-hmm. for example agar portfolio mein aapka ek kaam hai mm-hmm. jisme jiska explanation bahut simple hai yeah. aur uska explanation a hai explanation 1 mm-hmm. par usko fir 4 5 mahine ho jate hain aur fir aapko ek chance milta hai public publicly bolne ka mm-hmm. aur aap wahi kaam ke bare mein explain kar rahe ho mm-hmm. par fir aap wo pura explanation hi change kar dalte ho mm-hmm. to people who are following you since the beginning they will think you are a liar they are not going to follow you anymore so that honesty is something 
that uh, that authenticity more than honesty is the authenticity is something which everybody wants mm -hmm. in 21st century mm -hmm. and jo log nahi de payenge i don't know what to tell about them mm -hmm. but jo log genuinely karte hai i'm i am with you like, please continue doing what like fine like if a person is just concerned about production i mean yeah. that, that has its own honesty of its own yeah. like if you are that honest i yeah, like you're just concerned, yeah. yeah like other like products i like i like andy warhol yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> again i'm taking names names no, no, but i like andy warhol for many reasons like yeah, yeah like right i mean even before coming here hmm. uh, like uh, apart from impressionists and yeah. uh, artists like Mumbai's Andrew Andy Warhol was one of the Heroes, artists yeah. whom I would I, I would uh, follow. Yeah, yes, and yeah. everybody's so, heroes, man. Yeah, so I like this uh, understanding of things. Like once he there's uh, one quotation by him that uh, art is a beautiful thing. Yeah. And business is the best art. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> so what does that mean? That's such a good quote. <laughs> no, but that's what so I mean. Because there are people like yeah. there, there's also counter. argument on the thing that we are talking yeah. like there are also people who are just complaining like we are soul we are soul like yeah. there is soul and body kind of thing yeah, yeah. soul and body but just think that how can a soul exist without a body like oh, it's yeah, just like a yeah, yeah, yeah. perfume without a container yeah, it's just, just just can't think yeah, of that's like, true And and and, and like if you are really concerned about soul you would you are not going to yeah. uh, ignore the ignore the body aspect as well right, as well That that's so true. And thing is like, uh, I mean, there is something which I even yeah, I suffer from. Yeah. Like just just to finish the point. Mm -hmm. Like, अगर आप अगर आप trend के लिए काम करते हो आप commercial काम करते हो तो at least be honest mm -hmm. and authentic. And that's what we want. Like we mm -hmm. just want the audience wants acknowledgement yeah. कि हाँ भाई ये मैं commercially बना रहा हूँ mm -hmm. और ये मैं अपने लिए बना रहा हूँ. Yeah. Like once you have that honesty. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel deceived by the end of it. Like when yes. they don't get the thing that they are, like yeah. if there is no not difference. I mean, otherwise there would be difference between the expectation and from the thing that you are getting. Yeah, more. like like that's that's what I mean. Like like in the world of Instagram and social media, where half of it is just fake, hmm. you want authenticity from everyone, hmm. and that becomes your priority. Like I want to trust this person. Hmm. and there are so many little little things about that person which make you like are is ka is pe mai ab trust nahi kar sakta mm -hmm. and that's what i that applies to everyone and that applies to artists as well mm -hmm. ki like agar aap ek explanation dete ho art ka aap kisi bande se connect kar rahe ho mm -hmm. ki ye mera art hai main is tarah se banata hu ye mera explanation hai and then few days at, uh, later you change the whole thing mm -hmm. you lose someone you lose a friend you lose a patron you lose someone who really wants wants to follow you so mm. in the world of fakeness be authentic that, that that's all I, that's all i have to say mm. and and uh, there are so many people who are authentic aur jo log fake hai wo unko pata hai ki wo fake hai and that's all we want we want you to acknowledge that yeah i am a fake person mm. and by saying ke yes i am a fake person mm. ab automatically real ban jata hai There's another aspect like that comes to my mind while we are yeah. talking about this. Uh, there's also another thing like uh, uh, like we look up to when when we talk about like somebody. Yeah. Somebody again. I don't, don't know if name. I should be taking the name, but no then, name, no name. But then when he to I mean his he once said that poets are not successful people. They are. Yeah. They are splendid failures. Yeah. So I mean poets are even so honest that they don't even care for. Uh, they yeah. they uh what do i say like there's so much of uh but so that honesty is what yeah that is what that is what one looks up to uh, uh, when when we talk about poets yeah. actually like you don't expect a uh, poet to talk like talk about market, market. Yeah, yeah, yeah you see <laughs> so a hard to hard conversation like that's like so true. This, that, that is why probably people say that when the doctors declared uh, patient and yeah, that yeah, yeah. we can't do anything take him yeah. to the poet yeah, <laughs> that's so true man those things i mean yeah i do discuss it with yeah. everyone who who so yeah. like and and just to add my two cents to the same argument like i know i'm an artist but i talk a lot about business like i have a business about mm -hmm. art i understand that mm -hmm. and th and that's what i mean by the whole argument not an argument like this this whole dialogue that 
आई हैव ए बिजनेस आई एम नॉट डिसीविंग यू बाय सेइंग के टू यू आई विल से ये मेरा बिजनेस है ठीक है एंड देन आई विल टॉक टू द कैमरा एंड से कि आई एम अ ट्रू आर्टिस्ट आई हैव अ थर्ड पार्टी हु हैंडल्स माय आर्ट आई एम आई हैव नथिंग टू डू विद दिस लाइक नो टॉक अबाउट बिजनेस टॉक अबाउट मनी इफ दैट्स व्हाट यू आर इनटू बट दैट्स व्हाट यू आर शोइंग योरसेल्फ एंड यू आर बीइंग ऑनेस्ट and that's how you make friends and that's how you make people understand bas wahi ek matlab wahi ek keh sakte ho ki ha ye thoda pet peeve hai mera like you can say that but you have explained it very beautifully ke like wo to rahega but and people have expectations from all sorts of people and mm-hmm. just you have to navigate the whole thing mm-hmm. so that's such a cool man so on that note On that note, हम आपको छोटा सा गिफ्ट देना चाहते हैं फॉर पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन दिस लिटिल प्रोग्राम थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बींग माई गेस्ट थैंक यू सो मच फॉर कमिंग टू दोल थैंक यू सो मच फॉर टॉकिंग इट वॉज सो मच फन मैन लाइक अब अब आप इसके ऊपर भी आर्ट करना है आप कर सकते हो हाँ सो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर कमिंग मैन थैंक यू गुड बाय